Hi, I'm Charlie Huang of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be doing a countdown of the top five most viewed videos of 2021. I have included links to the videos in the comments section below. And the number five most popular video of 2021, what to do if the balloon does not deflate. Here are the take home messages from that video. All right, uh, so take home messages. Um, uh, failure, uh, failure of balloon deflation is a very rare uh, complication. It could be due to a defective or sometimes a kinked uh, balloon uh, catheter shaft. So if you badly kink your balloon catheter shaft while advancing it, uh, you might consider just calling for a new balloon. But if you run into a situation where your balloon fails to deflate, uh, remember this approach. Step one, uh, try again uh, with a new endoflator stopcock system. Step two, uh, switch to saline in the inflator, infuse the saline into the balloon to decrease the viscosity of the contrast in the balloon, and then try to deflate again. Step 3A, try to rupture the balloon by inflating it beyond burst pressure. Uh, usually more than 30 atmospheres are required, and obviously have a covered stent ready uh, in case of uh, vessel perforation. And step 3B, try puncturing the balloon with a stiff wire or the back end of a coronary wire. Remember to use a guide liner or an inflated OTW balloon uh, to minimize the chance of uh, wire perforation. Uh, finally, if all else fails, uh, you'll need to uh, put in mechanical circulatory support and call for surgical uh, removal. Number four, bubbles, coronary air embolus, what to do? So take home messages. First, uh, prevent bubbles. Uh, be very meticulous about preparing your manifold so that no bubbles get injected in the first place. If you do end up with a large uh, coronary air embolism, here is the approach that we typically take. Immediately, uh, administer 100% oxygen and forcefully inject saline into the coronary artery to flush through the bubbles. Consider using intracoronary epinephrine. Then uh, get a coronary wire in there to break up the bubbles and use a thrombectomy catheter or guide extension catheter to suck the bubbles out. Provide hemodynamic support as needed. And once the patient stabilizes, if there is still no reflow or slow reflow, uh, then use uh, intracoronary vasodilators as you would normally would to reestablish flow uh, for these cases. So how did our patient do? Well, he did fine. Uh, he was uh, bradycardic for a few seconds, but thankfully uh, his heart rate quickly returned to normal. Uh, flow remained to me three. And again, thankfully, it was as if nothing happened. Number three, Widowmaker, left main occlusion right after a normal stress test. Take home messages. First, as much as we cardiologists take them for granted, stress tests are not benign. This case uh, is a dramatic illustration that STEMIs are caused by acute plaque rupture and thrombosis, and that plaque rupture can still happen even after a normal stress test. Sometimes they may even be triggered uh, by the stress test. The uh, prognosis of acute left main occlusion is very grim. Uh, most patients do not even make it to the cath lab, but it can happen. Survival depends on very rapid reperfusion, and it is perfectly okay to stent from the left main into the LED right across the left circumflex. Most of these patients will be in profound cardiogenic shock, and the outcome may hinge on rapid mechanical circulatory support. Number two, can you stent a bridge? Take home messages. Uh, medical therapy uh, is the mainstay uh, of treatment for symptomatic myocardial bridging. Uh, beta blockers are uh, considered first line and uh, calcium channel blockers often used as well. Um, Ivabradine uh, can be considered. Uh, nitrates uh, should be stopped uh, as uh, they can exacerbate symptoms. Uh, the efficacy of PCI is questionable, uh, but data is extremely limited. Uh, can you do it? Well, well, of course you can do it, uh, but the better question is, uh, should you do it? And the uh, jury, uh, in, my in my mind, is still out, uh, but uh, the limited data that is available thus far uh, is not uh, particularly encouraging. Um, for patients uh, with truly uh, medically refractory symptoms, surgery, uh, either a myotomy or cabbage, uh, can be considered. So what happened to our patient? Well, uh, she ended up being referred to a cardiac surgeon for an evaluation, uh, but after some discussion, uh, she actually decided to uh, continue uh, medical therapy. And the number one most popular video on 6NDA in 2021, 
TAP stenting, an alternative bifurcation stenting strategy. All right, so take home messages. Uh, TAP is a, a fairly easy uh, provisional stenting technique, at least compared to inside crush or reverse culotte, and can be considered for bifurcations uh, with smaller side branches, less than two and a half millimeters, and larger bifurcation angles, greater than 60 degrees. TAP is a modification of T-stenting uh, with slight protrusion of the side branch stent into the main branch to get full side branch ostium coverage. TAP is fairly easy, uh, maintains wire access uh, to the main branch throughout, and does not leave behind multiple stent layers or crushed mangled stent layers. However, um, there is a small neocarina, but that can be minimized uh, for the right uh, bifurcation geometry. All right, Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching and for supporting this channel.